and we can't bring up the map ourselves. Why not? Uh, it's in handouts. Yeah, oh. handout. Um, can the GM open the handout for us so that way it'll appear on my screen as not a pop out? <laughs> That way it'll be uh, on... hard, but it's under maps. No, no, no. If I open it, it opens as a pop out. If the GM opens it, it opens up on the screen, and the screen will pick it up for the viewers. That's what I'm saying. Ah, I just opened it up. Does that mean you can see it? It did not. Oh no, it doesn't. There's a way that you can show it to players, and there yeah, we go. It's now it's open. Okay. Because when you do it again, it'll make it visible for the uh, for my camera. If I open it, it's a pop out, and it's not visible. Okay. Uh, so you're seeing Weesburg now. Okay. Right now I'm seeing it in uh, in the roll twenty window. Whereas if I open it, it pops out of the roll twenty window and it's not visible to the screen. Got it. Okay. Uh, so you're at A, which is the Black Gold Inn. You guys come out. Uh, it's a sunny day. Uh, the watch has given you a pass on on the what happened the night before. Uh, you were briefly questioned by the coroner and the watch there, but they pretty much let you go once the guy confessed to being hired to kill you. And you go to the bare belly. Joseph's not happy at all. He's kind of glaring at you guys. Not and... our fault, buddy. How's the morning, Joseph? Uh, crumbles. And he's, <laughs> you know, he and and Wolder have got uh, some woodworking tools out. They're trying to deal with the uh, the scorch burns on the boat. Uh, and he, he's just, he's angry. But you guys get on and he gets underway. And he's just thankful that his uh, cargo was not damaged. Cause well, for what deadly. else, for what little it's worth, guys that, guys that did this got theirs. Do you want to look for a prosthetic here? Uh, I mean, uh, I guess I kind of have to. I gotta, I gotta live in this world, which means that I need to be able to at least not freak the fuck out every time somebody looks at me. An eye patch is common. You can buy one here. I mean, I could probably just make an eye patch. Yeah, it's only cost six pence, so they're cheap. I don't have six. Actually, you know what? I never rolled for how much my starting money I had. It's uh, no, cash. apparently, I did. I did. Never mind. I did. How much did you say it was? Uh, six pence for an eye patch. 26. Six pence. Okay. Six. That's it. What about that nose? I need something to cover up the nose. That's the real problem. That's the minus 30 problem. Yeah. The gilded nose is scarce, and you're in a, I'll say, a small town. Let me. Find the chart. Yeah, because unfortunately, that's the real problem. The eye thing, that's just a little off-putting. The nose thing. Skeletor Scare. is the is the most friendly version of not having a nose. Mm. Other make, examples are terrifying. Make a percentile, just D100 percentile. I was about to say, you're going to make me make a gossip check. I would have a negative 11 to trying to figure that one out. You have a 60% chance of finding one here. Well, I didn't find one. No, they don't have any here. I grab so a carrot. So you guys get underway, and the... Oh, um, real quick. What about a, uh, um, a mask? You want mask. a map? Mask? Oh, mask. Uh, that should be under equipment, miscellaneous, I believe. I mean, if not like a full mask, uh, then I'll just get a piece of fabric and I'll, you know, cowboy style wrap it around from nose down. Let's see, is that a hood? A hood or a mask? That's under clothes and accessories. That's five shillings. I can't afford that. Actually, you can. Uh, you, Joseph is paying you all four shillings a day. So, so that's uh, you've earned eight shillings so far. He's so paying us to wreck his life. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, then I'll just put down four shillings and I'll take a mask. 
Oh, I wrote down eye pens. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> I stick a pence in my eye. Eye patch. Mask. Alright. Now the nose thing isn't so visible. I'm just really weird. Yeah. You look like Phantom of the Opera, but a dwarf. Yeah, yeah you slay your dwarf at that. <laughs> I'll figure out yeah. what my mask looks like at some point. We need That's to get actually... some war paint on that when we find someone with art skill. Now, uh, you guys end up, uh, you continue up the River Bogan. And it's a relatively uneventful journey. The River Bogan's much narrower than the River Reich. The forest encroaches in. The Skag Hills can be seen to the right. The Hagger Cribs can be seen to the left. And you eventually come to an influx where the River Blatt... Blurt? One sec. How's it spelled? <laughs> Blut. <laughs> the river <laughs> Blut comes into the river Bogan, and there Joseph has Wolder up in front looking for bogs, sandbars, anything hidden. Uh, but otherwise, the river Bogan from here to Bogan is pretty safe. And you eventually, by nighttime, reach an inn, and you can see it's a riverside inn. And hanging over the entrance is a sign of a swan, the majestic swan. <laughs> and there you arrive at the inn. <clears throat> and there's a lot of patrons here tonight because there's a lot of river traffic going to Bogenhofen. It's a festival. I'd hope so. Yeah, lots of river traffic. You also, there's a road that runs from Weisbrook all the way up to Bogenhofen. It's the river road. And there's a lot of foot traffic going up there as well. So it's quite crowded, quite busy. The costs for rooms have not changed 10 shillings if you want a private room, which can sleep up to four. Actually, it doubles the price. So five shillings each if you guys want to share rooms. Uh, one shilling for average food. Uh, two shillings for good food. Ten pence for poor food. And for the Slayer, just one sec. That's down. How much for beer? For A keg beer. of ale for the dwarf would be three shillings. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you guys get another four shillings for the journey here. All right, uh, so so five per person then. Five shillings for private rooms, unless you want to stay in the common room. It's five pence. We stay on the on the barge. Ten pence actually for common room. Oh, they doubled it. Uh, you can stay on the barge if you want. Yes. That's what I would prefer to do. Yeah, I don't okay. see a problem with that right now. Same. That's uh, dinner though. Still sounds good, so I'll pay the shilling. Yeah. Uh, they'll just I'll to, the barge. Just to clarify, um, how much payments has that been to date? Three out of four. Twelve shillings total. Thank you. All right. I'll be having average food as well and sleeping on the barge. Anybody eating poor? Uh, yeah, I'll Ooh. eat poor. Okay, uh, make a 10%. On endurance? Yeah. Plus or minus uh, 10%? No, just, uh, no, just uh, you have a 10% chance of getting the galloping trucks but my massive endurance doesn't help me. Uh, you get a roll if you have, if you, it's the first is just to see if you possibly can get it. And the second, what'd you roll? 69, bro. Yeah. 69, dude. Yeah, man. Um, the, the next morning you guys wake up 
So you've all spent money for food. You wake up, uh, spend money again. You're eating poor, good, bad. You're skipping meals. If you skip meals, when combat happens, you have a chance of getting tired, fatigued. I'll go ahead and pop a shilling again. Yeah. That's what I would. How much and for poor? Five pence. Ten pence. Ten, ten, ten. No, six pence for poor. My bad. Six. Six pence, none the richer. Yeah. And make a 10% chance again. And what'd you roll? 95. Oh, you're fine. Yeah. You just love this stuff. Everyone's looking at you saying, how can you eat that? <laughs> love it. Uh, okay. Next day, you get up. You get back on the boat. You're already on the boat. You go finish your breakfast at the Majestic Swan, and Joseph gets underway. About three hours out, you can see a great castle in the distance up on a hill uh, surrounded by a great wall that overlooks the another river. It's an unnamed river. I don't know what it's called that comes in on the left side or on your right as you're going upstream. Another river is coming in. And right at the junction of those two rivers on a hill surrounded by a wall is Castle Gronberg. Castle Gronberg is, the ruler's name is Gronberg. I don't have his full name right in front of me. But he is the lord of this area. Probably the ruler over Bogenhop. And you continue up the River Reich throughout the day into late afternoon. And the first thing you see as you arrive at Bogenhofen is a series of tents being erected. Uh, what do I have here? That map seriously moved like candy corn when it was rising in. That was hilarious. Yeah, it's, um, let me clean this up. Oh, God darn it. Thank you. And there it is. Ooh, how very retro. Yeah, it's old. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely it's old. Classic. They're going to be redoing it, obviously, for the new 4E version. I didn't realize I had some cleanup here. I suppose while you're setting that in place, now might be the time to ask. Uh, so I'm looking for an inheritance from the Baronet, but you mentioned that there's a greater Lord of the Land. What's sort of the hierarchy of the Empire around here? Where does the Baronet stack in here? Who? Uh, this guy? This Baron? Uh, well, the one I'm inheriting from. You don't know. Okay. You're going to have to find that out. Gotcha. You've never heard of him. So, if that says anything. All right. So, there's a series of tents being erected over here, as you guys can look from the distance. Tents of all sizes, all shapes are going up on the just outside of the city walls. And the bare belly comes up and docks. Many boats are pulling in, docking. Some to unload goods for the shop and fest, others to unload people wanting to attend it. And you are now here. What do you guys want to do? I go shopping. Well, I should probably stop and uh, mention once again to the group that uh, there could be a very dangerous cult in this city. Uh, and we might need to interact with it to some degree. Did we... Here after at sundown, after we kind of tend to serve some duties. Of course, of course. But I suppose I am going to attempt to pull in on this inheritance. I might need your help if I'm required to read anything, though. That's fine. I just need to uh, better equip myself with some things and get rid of this device. She says, holding up the crossbow. Then I'll stick with you on your errands then, and then we'll attend to mine. Right. I'm gonna listen for gossip. I'm gonna look for like a, a little purple piece of fabric and like make a purple ascot out of it. And uh, 
Albrecht would be selling the mail and and what was it he had a blunderbuss? Mm-hmm. Yeah, get that sold. Okay. I don't want to keep it around. Can any of us use it? Can't. Uh, no. Blunder no. blunderbuss is your problem is going to be reloading it. Anyone can use a blunderbuss. It's a little cannon that you just point. You don't even roll ballistics. Reloading takes forever, though. Like, potentially all of combat. It's a reload, too, and the Hawkland long rifle is reload four, so it's not too bad. It could be better, and more to the point, I don't think any of us have the skill. That being said, if any of us do plan on grabbing any black powder skill down the line, it would be nice to have around. Worst case, even if we can't reload it, we just like keep one round ready to go in case of a fight. Right, then. Well, then we'll keep that and add that to the party's pool of devices. And unless anybody wants that male shirt that uh, we have, then Albert will sell that. I suppose we could all honestly use it. Yeah. There is some debate about that. That's a little too heavy for me. I'm looking for something a little bit more flexible. Okay, so one at a time. Uh, let's start with you, Tufane. What are you doing? Okay, so she wants to sell the crossbow and then use the proceeds to buy a leather jack, some leather leggings, and a leather skull cap. All right. You've pulled in to the dock. Uh, you've moored. Uh, Joseph has paid docking fees. And he tells you he's going off to the offices of Herr Rugbroder, a local merchant, to collect payment for delivery of the wine. And he's got to also arrange for stevedores to unload it, take it to Rugbroder. Mm -hmm. And as he turns, he says, don't forget the Schaffenfest. It's definitely not to be missed. And he heads off into the distance. You go and you want to find an armor. Well, specifically uh, a crossbow, or whoever will buy a crossbow. Buy a crossbow. Yeah. Make a roll. This is going to be gossip. You want to ask around for a weapons uh, dealer. Yes. Somebody who buys and sells weapons. Oh. And most people are looking at you because you're a wood elf and they just sort of back away in fear. Some of this the mothers are, are putting their eyes over their children. <laughs> yeah, could their um, hand over those children's eyes. Um, Someone with her could I attempt to help her sell it. Sure. Let's give it a go. Gossip. Let me scroll down. Gossip. That's better. Okay. And yeah, eventually they say, yeah, go right over there. Down, what is that? Erlong Street, Erlong Strauss. And we'll put it right there. Write it out right now. Um, There we go. So we'll put that right there. And you go into the shop. You see a surly big guy, uh, typical cliche, bald head, big arms, somebody who works making weapons, buying, selling them. <laughs> he says, yeah, what do you want? Good afternoon. I was wondering if perhaps you might be interested in purchasing a fine crossbow today. He takes the crossbow. He looks up, looks down. He says, yeah. And how much do they cost? It's five. He looks at it. He says, I'll give you a gold crown. I'll make it two. Make a haggle. Nah. 
Do you, uh, I'm going to fortune point that. <laughs> you really want to fortune it? You see how important they are in combat. Um, let's see. I have. Well, I would have one left, so yes, I will try. Go ahead. Come on. Are you making a roll? I just rolled it. Uh, I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Oh, I did same. notice it because it's almost the same roll. Yep. Uh, yeah. He looks at it and goes, nah, this is, see, this is bent over here. I'm going to have to restring this and, and the crank. Uh, no, nah, no, nah, one go crown. You want to take it? Uh, no, that's too low. Okay. It's so all kind of go, well, that was a wash. Um, let's see if we can find a weaponsmith then. Or, this excuse me, an armor, uh, armor smith. Oh, an armor. Yes. Yeah, make another gossip. Scary this yeah. time. Yeah. And there happens to be an armor smith's right across the street. Armor. Okay. And you go in and almost similar, big guy used to dealing with metal. And what do you want? How can I help you, my lady? I was hoping you might be able to sell me a leather jerkin and a skull cap. For your size, hmm. Let's see. Gotta make room for the elf ears, after all. He looks around and he says, Yeah, this should fit. Pulls out a jerkin. And it does look like it fits. Usually I take measurements, but I um, <clears throat> won't here. <laughs> um, so, how much would the pair of them cost? Uh, whatever's listed normally. Okay. Can I argue for 17? So it's you're getting a jerkin and you're getting leggings. Is that correct? A, a, a jerkin and a cap. So that would be 18 normally, jerkin but I have 17. Yeah, that's 18. Um, you want to try to haggle them for 17? Yeah, sure. All I have. Make a roll. Defane really isn't used to no. social customs. You just see this really dead look on his face, deadpan look, as you go through your whole spiel trying to haggle him down. Mm. He goes 18. Well, then I guess I can just take the jerkin. Okay, you don't want the skull cap? Afford it. Okay. Uh, I could always try to interject if you'd like me to. If, it's, if you want. <laughs> Well, you see, uh, you're simply uh, not being fair to this uh, fair lady. That might be better. Not that fair. Don't all too. And he gets deadpan listening to you. <laughs> There's a, no reaction on his face. He goes, hey, Pete. <laughs> well, I'll Try take this the any in. harder, he's going to raise it. Excuse me, the jack. Sorry. Well, they're jack. Um, yeah, arms and body armor. But yeah, I'll pay them, and then that's that's all I got. <laughs> I okay. can't buy anything else. All right. And you're a noble. How sad is that? Um, next. Going through my money. So we've got, who else wants to do something? I'll Rick engage in, uh... Oh, Rockley, go ahead. All right, yes. I'm looking to go to an armor to sell the mail, perhaps get my weapon fix and maybe buy some more armor okay you go to the armor uh so you walk in while you see tefane counting out every little pence and shilling trying to afford this jerkin and <coughs> what's the first thing you want to sell i don't remember what kind of mail it was but it was a some form of chain mail probably from a who? body from who from the 
one of those groups that attacked us while we were on the wagon. I think it was the second group just before the uh, watchman came to us. Oh, that was one of the rock. coachmen's. Coachmen's. Yes. Anyone want to wear that? Um, actually, I wouldn't mind. Rather than sell, it's up to you. All right then. I would let you yeah. sell my leather jacket if you did. I would gladly take your leather jacket if you started wearing the chainmail. <laughs> uh, We're so poor. You need to wear Sorry. leather under chain, so you should keep it. All right. If you're willing to let me have that, I would gladly take some of the extra protection. Make uh, a per a die twenty roll. We'll do it. I know that's uh, heresy. Heresy. And let's do this. That doesn't seem good. No. You're going to have to pay the armorer to get it uh, fitted for you. One tenth of its normal cost. It three is, crowns. It costs three crowns. So one tenth um, of that. Wait, is it a be, coat or a shirt? It is a. Two crowns, rather. For a shirt. Let's see. Armor. You've got a male it's a male coat or male sh 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 male coat arms and body Oof, so it nice. is three crowns and one tenth of that would be six shillings you'd have to pay to get it fitted done so come back uh, he takes your measurements come back tomorrow i'll have it ready thank you uh, well in the meantime i still have a weapon to get prepared and what else? You have a weapon? Yeah, the uh, the hand weapon needs to have one point of damage repair. Aha, you go to the weaponsmith for that. And so this is uh, um, Max's weapon emporium. <laughs> and he, uh, uh, you go in and yes, it costs one tenth whatever the normal price is. So one-tenth of a gold crown would be uh, uh -huh. two shillings? Yeah. All right. Two shillings? Yes. No, wait a minute. One-tenth of a gold crown is two shillings. Yeah. All right. And uh, there's a couple of things I need to look up. I want to try to replace my matches and uh, my tinderbox that was stolen. So I need to see what those... I think they're under tools and kits. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Anything that's on tools and kits, you'll be able to find here. So just go ahead and buy what you want. I was wrong. I'm going to have to keep looking. There we go. Perfect. So anyone who needs anything, oh. go do that. I need some money, because yeah, I feel like if uh, all I've got is four shillings a day, I'm really yeah, gonna run out of I'm gonna run out of money you, for drinking. You get another four uh, for this final leg of the journey, so he pays you before he leaves. Right, but I go through a keg a day, at the lowest, which is six. I'm gonna run yeah, out. Yeah, so, you're gonna run out pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. so I wanna go, you know, peruse the streets to see if I can find a uh, something to pay the bills. That's average price. You can get shitty uh, ale for half that. Look, I might not have a nose anymore, but I do have a sense of taste. 1.5, uh, you can get really bad ale at the keg level for 1.5 shillings. Look, I'm point. not drinking from the barber's thing yet. Okay. Look, I'm Anyone just else? looking for Want somebody who needs some work done of the kind that yeah. I'm... Used ah, to doing. you're looking for work. Uh, okay. Well, I have... Yeah. I know my work skill is melee combat, so... Somebody needs someone beaten up. Coincidentally, that is also my job, so I might be inclined to join him. You see Teamsters and Stevedores. The Teamsters seem to occupy the southern part of the docks, and the Stevedores the northern part. 
And uh, you can tell that the two groups are kind of eyeing each other and saying derogatory things, hurling insults at one another. That seems to be an ongoing sort of jibe with them. And you th- would possibly could get work loading and unloading boats. That's not what we're looking for. Okay. What if... What if you go and get a job from the Stevedores to beat the shit out of some Teamsters, and I'll get a job from the Teamsters to go beat the shit out of some Stevedores, put them in their but then place? But what if we have to beat the shit out of each other? Yes, and I look at you with one glaring <laughs> eye. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. <laughs> so, what would be a good skill to look at for this? For what? Uh, for trying to find work, particularly. Well, hang on. I remember this being a thing under endeavors. So well, let me take a look. Don't you have an inheritance note to go check out? This is true. That I do. You are invited to come along. Mm-hmm. Would you want your main server and Albrecht to come with you? Of course. Yes, we should definitely change before we go do that. Yes, clean off all that blood off of you. Oh, I assume this was stuff we were doing before we went to do that. For that, yes, that's correct. Yeah, right. So if anyone has nothing left... No, so I can't Uh, make I want to listen for gossip, specifically for the cult. You're listening to see if there's any word on what cult? Purple socks or hands or clothes. Purple or... Hand, the purple hand. Good. Make gossip. So let me get this straight. An elven mage is going through town asking anyone if they've heard about the purple hand cult. Uh, I have a hood up and it should not be obvious. And I'm listening <clears throat> more than talking, which okay. clearly I didn't hear shit. Yeah, uh, the first group you come up to and you say, Purple Hand, cult, cult. Uh, You mean, uh, what, chaos cult? I hear they're prowling the streets. (laughs) Sigmar, save us. Come, let's go. And they start running away. And you go to ask another group and you see them talking to a watch and pointing at you, the two you just talked to. Fun, fun time. I disappear. Okay. Uh, make a stealth. Where the hell is it? Oh, there it is. Bottom left. It's a basic. I'm super uh, stealth. God. Not that stealthy, but uh, the watch don't. The watch don't. Watch, don't take them very seriously. So you're off the hook. So let's get some counters on here because you guys might be at different places at different times. Yeah, because Wood Elves are super known for being chaos worshippers. It's not that. It's uh, it's like Skaven. You could be arrested for saying, sk- sk- talking about Skaven. But just look at you. You're wearing a hood and you're acting creepy. You must be a cultist. Mm-hmm. To be fair, dark elves are known for being chaos. <gasps> you're a dark elf, aren't you? Coming to torture you all. Because you're so shadowy underneath that hood. <laughs> underneath the cloak, he's actually wearing very much spiky, horrible torture gear. True story. There we go. Right. So, we've got all of you right now. Uh, we'll assume back at the bare belly. You've gone and done all your shopping. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll just put you guys all around here. And who did I miss someone? I did. Durak. No, there he is. And what do you guys want to do at this point? Uh, I believe I want to try to see if I can cash in that inheritance. I need to find, I think, Drybrick Barrel, if I'm reading that right. Let's see. Let's read the note. The inheritance note. Uh, Garton Wegg is where you want to go. Messiers, lock, stock, and barrel. Civil lawyers, commissioners for oath, Garton Wegg. So you want to find Garton Wegg. 
So as you go out and you start asking, uh, some of the locals here are looking, are you daft? There's no garden wag here. Are you sure there was a plots wag over there? No, no garden wag. I lived here my whole life. This is Bogenhagen, isn't it? This Bogenhagen, you're in the right spot. There's no oh, garden that... wag. <laughs> is this a <laughs> local joke? No, no. Hey, this guy can read. You want me? To, uh, can I? Do you mind if I look? Do you mind if he looks? You know what? Sure, if he can read. <laughs> and he reads and he goes through it. He kind of opens his eyes when he sees the sum. Uh, hey, well, Schultz and Friedman, they exist. They're the printers. Well, I suppose they must be the ones I need to go find. And they're up over here, Schultz and Friedman. Seems like it's all a scam. <laughs> What's going on? If you pay us two crowns, we can get the, the matter expedited so you can get your inheritance faster. <laughs> yeah. From this, Araby, from this Araby prince. What's even funnier is when you consider that this, if that's true, and this man was a purple hand magus, the fact that he was deceived in such a way. Or lured. Um, yeah. Possibly it was a hazing ritual. The thing about this is very strange. All right, so Schultz and Friedman, right there. And to be fair, when hasn't it been strange? You walk in, and you see an old guy, bespectacled, dressed pretty nicely, long hair balding on top. He looks up at you and goes, yes, what can I do for you? We're about to close. Hurry up. Ah, yes. I'm here for a matter regarding the uh, Baronet Lebrung. Oh! Huh? Hey, he looks back, and there's another old guy also working with him. Uh, Johan, do you know anything about this? Johan comes puddling forward. Uh, let me see the note. He You're takes here. a look at the note. Oh! Yeah, you remember who got that printed? I remember a tall guy, white brimmed hat, black hat, wide brimmed, had a crossbow on his back. Yeah, he got a, a, a few of those printed. A fluffy collar as well. Yeah, fluffy collar. That's right. Yeah, I, <sighs> he had an air oh, of. You must be kidding me. About him. <laughs> oh my god! His eyes like slowly narrow. It's like. I don't suppose you've ever heard of anyone around town by the name of Liberung, have you? Liberung? No, no, other than this note. Are you Liberung? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, good to meet you. Well, I'm sorry, it was not true. Mm. Even, even from prison, the man manages to find ways to be an absolute blight upon our existence. Did oh, he he's bleed dead. to death? He's dead. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. whatever. Even now, he finds ways to blight us. Oh, quite all right. Just a, just a little bit of a misunderstanding, it seems. So I thank you so much for your help. And as Garrett turns, like, just a single tear goes out his cheek. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, could... he's still provably a noble now, and that's still worth something. Oh, we I should look into the name of the Baron. By now. Uh, that's a good point, actually. I mean, the person who was coming here was at least reasonably convinced they had some type of relative. So maybe there's some research to be done in town. Hold on a second. I'm a yes. noble. I have the the skill of, of lore and heraldry. Would I perhaps know if even if this baronet is real? Uh, you mean uh, Leibowitz, right? That's who you're sure. Talking about. The yeah. the name and the, the the land and the title and the rest of that. Uh, go ahead, make a roll. See if you've heard the name. Since you did, um, 
Yeah, you've heard the name when you were journeying through Nome as you came from uh, 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 Aval Avalorn. You uh, crossed the mountains and you came through Nome. And uh, Leibowitz seemed to be a, a, a family of some repute in Nome. Maybe it's legit. You'd have to go to Nome. How far out of our way is that, I think? Uh, I know it's somewhere to the east, but I don't know how far. Actually, yeah, that's like all the way out there, isn't it? Something like that. Well, it's mountains, but it's not... We'd have to travel and not go back to Altdorf. All right, because of the uh, because of Ernst or whatever happened there. I mean, there's probably a road that leads there because it is a huge city, but I don't know how long that'll take for us to go there. Uh, well, at the very least, we can finish up what we're doing here. At least it's honest pay, if nothing else. Well, yeah, True let's that. spend some time to relax a little. Maybe you see the the tournament and enjoy the festival. Yeah. yeah. You know. You don't have the money to go anywhere right now. Yeah, so oh, we're going to have... sound fantastic, though. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this seems like a fantastic opportunity for us to spend some time making money. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, at least even if this did turn out to be a red herring, at least I've done what I set out to do in the first place. Get some distance between me and Middenheim. So that's a success. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I could have been headed to the Grey Man's but now, ah! You come back to the boat and you're going to spend the night there. Are you going to get a meal? You can see street vendors. Well, actually, vendors aren't setting up here in the city. There, A lot of food is being offloaded to go to the shopping fest. There's obviously going to be food tents and food food stalls all over the place. Yeah, I take it the uh, festival isn't actually set up yet, right? No, they're setting it up tonight. It starts right. tomorrow. So I'll, I'll get a meal for today. That'll Same be good. Shilling. All right, shilling again. Same yeah. thing. And does Durak want to go pour? Oh, yeah. Roll? Does Durak still want to try to make money? 10% chance. Well, I mean, I assumed that I failed to make money today. Uh, you're not going to find any combat-related money, not just yet. But go ahead. If you want to... Uh, I'll also be eating poor, uh, both of you. there's no big payout. Uh, make... Yeah. Go ahead. Make... Um, perceptions. Yeah, you make that. Uh, make a perception. Oh, O2. Nice roll. Everybody. Both of you two, Evo, you're right in luck. Um, Durak, go ahead, make a perception, Evo. Offloading right in front of you is uh, Noble. All right. It looks like a, a rich, well to doer and uh, with his wife and his kids. Double and thumb ball. Double uh, fumble. Impressive. Okay. And this noble's getting off, and he doesn't seem to have any bodyguards or retainers. He's getting off, actually, a transport riverboat with a lot of others. So you're seeing a lot of families. A couple of them look like they have money. They don't have guards or escorts. Well, you know, if you're looking to offer your services to them as... Your former employer, I can attest to what a wonderful job you've done lately. And that while I don't require your service any further, I'm sure you could serve them very well. I don't know how much emotion you can parse from just one eyeball, but... I think the look of confusion at first, like, you're not my former employer. And then a slow realization of, oh, this is some sort of grift that you're trying to come up with. Yes. Now <laughs> uh, the, yeah, you're on the trolley. I, I know it all blurs together after like four days of grifting, but stay with me. Here. Yeah, a furrowed brow of confusion and then an eyebrow raise of, oh, I get it. 
Part of me is a little suspicious, though. Just because we don't see security doesn't mean there isn't any. If anything, there'd have to be a reason. Well, I suppose that's up to you, then, to offer. And if you do offer, you can always refer them back to me, and I will assist you. Yes. Albert will take the initiative and approach those un unescorted mobile. Uh-huh. Uh, go ahead. When he gets close, he will do a flourishing bow and say, Greetings, good sirs. My name is Albert, and I cannot help but notice that you are unescorted in this beautiful city. And while the watch does such a good job of keeping the streets safe, there are certain alleyways and thoroughfares that are a little bit more dangerous than others. Would you like some escort to go to where you are headed? Make a charm. All right. This is going to suck. I've only got a 38 in this, I think. Let me see if I can find it again. Charms, uh, basic, upper left. There you go. Mm. By the skin of the hairs on my teeth. I... That's not an opposed role. And he says, yeah, I could pay you three shillings a day. For the Schaffenfest, if you don't mind. Very well. Thank you very much, good sir. Hey, that's one. You guys all want to try to look for people getting off? Uh, actually, I'm going to be right next to Albrecht, and I'm just like, thumb him to the side. Say, team. I, I do the same. And... Oh, for the same family? He says, I only need one. I don't need all three of you. I'm sorry. You guys can find it out if you want. I'm sorry. Did he say we could fight it out if we want? Uh-huh. <laughs> my eyebrow raises again, and my hands move down to my axes. <laughs> Do you... I, I, did, I did mean literally. <laughs> Of course not. Uh, I move on to see for anyone else. Good sir, you do want Make to be cautious when speaking to dwarves of ruddy hair. They tend to have a need for an excuse to fight. I shall keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, come, what do I call you? My name is Albert Schultz. Come. Come, Albrecht. And he and starts what is heading your name, off. Sir? My name? Oh. Uh, hold on. Did you forget? Uh, sir, Ants the pants. I, I'm thinking. <laughs> hold on. Thank God for finishing. The must it's been <laughs> so long since I've talked to a living person. Wait, I didn't mean that. I've only oh given no, it's Von Karstein! I refuse to be addressed by any name. I'm Berenstein yeah. Von Not a Necromancer. The name's Gunter! Gunter Tilgner! And I shall give my plug for Fantasy Name Generator right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I shall just call you Master while we are within this working relationship. That's suitable. Come with me. Yes, Master. Yeah. And he goes, you're supposed to say Matha. Um, <laughs> Matha. Yes, Matha. Um, okay. What about uh, Master? And he goes to the cross pikes right here. And goes in, and he has rooms he's already ordered ahead of time. Uh, he says you can sleep outside in front of the room, the door. <laughs> so he'll be sleeping huge. literally on the hall, right in front of the door. And, Will I be yeah. afforded a chair, Master? What's that? Will I be afforded a chair? Uh, no. Very well. Okay. Evo, make a perception. Durak, make a perception. I wish I'd joined them. 
Very good. Durak gets in front of another group. Another set of well-to-doers. This guy's name is Victor Herring, and he will pay three shillings a day, standard price for seasoned mercenaries. And let's see. He's going to go ooh, all the way up here. You've got a good. He has money. And 27 is the journey's in. And this is the richest uh, establishment in town. So they scowl at you with your mask and your tats, but they allow it to happen because this patron is powerful. And you see behind you, the, the bar, a uh, an innkeep, as well as two big burly guys. Uh, and But the food here is excellent. They do buy you the cheapest meal but is still excellent from everything you've eaten. Right. As far as ale goes, your hose. The Sorry, say that last part again. As ale goes, your hose. Because oh. the ale here is very expensive. How much? The double normal price, six. Six. Shillings. Shillings. Okay, actually, Whoa. I have... You know what? I have exactly... Five silver shillings and twenty brass pennies, which is six shillings. All right. Is that for a keg? That's enough for a keg. You know what? If it does, if it's like the same maneuver that the other noble pulled on uh, Albrecht, uh -huh. I'm just gonna good. take the keg to just outside the room and pretend to sit on it. And yeah. then, when they go in the room, I'm gonna start drinking it. And then, when it's yeah. empty, I have a chair <laughs> or a pillow or something. <laughs> All right, anyone else looking for work this way? Yeah, no, fuck it. I'll just wait in one of the one of the bars, see if it see if a fight breaks out. Okay. Uh, no fight. I could always go for an alternate means of making money. You want to too? Okay. Well, uh, I am an informer, and if I'm going to advance later, I do need a ring of informants. So I'm going to try to uh, collect. Uh, I guess kids on the street or anyone like uh, beggars and the like, and offer them like copper for any scandalous words that they hear. And of course, yeah. the usual plan will be to sell those words back to the people who said them, or to people who really want to hear them. That is the life of the informer. Okay. So it would mostly rely on, I suppose, gossip here. Yeah. First of all, you want to find street urchins, so make a perception. is not that high. I need to improve it. But yeah, anyway. that was good enough, and I've rolled random, and mm -hmm. uh, you got it. So you see some street urchins playing as this town is starting to fill up with all the people coming in. And this street... Look, I did for you, Gabda! Well, hey, you heard that there's a festival coming up soon, right? Everybody knows that, Gabna. And you see lots of the rich people going around, too, don't you? Yes, we have, Governor. <laughs> and you'd love some of their money, wouldn't you? I love it. I lo well, so we would I. Yeah, but and we're afraid of them. They're big, big, big. They usually have lots okay. of big guys with them. I'm going to, like, put an arm around them and, like, be conspiratorial. Well, I'll have you know, I have a couple of friends that are hanging out with some of them. And if you focus on this one, this one, and this one... I'll be sure that nothing will happen to you. All you have to do is listen for anything scandalous they might have to say. And hardly a single thing could ever possibly happen to you. And when you hear them, all you have to do is come back to me. That's it. That's, that's it. it. Oh, Kevna. work. I'm thinking that's great. Let's do it, Kevna. He holds out his hand. All right. <laughs> I'll go ahead and uh, hand him out some copper shillings. How many kids are willing to sign up here? Uh, he's got a gaggle of about six of them. Uh, sure, I'll throw him a penny each right now. That is basically the forward for this. He kind of frowns a little bit. Well, he <laughs> looks at the, the penny back and forth. <laughs> well, uh, I guess this will be part of haggling then. How much they want and how we're going to pay. Make a bribery. And there you go. You get three rolls. That was your first guess is a penny that's lower. 
Okay. Well, that was a penny for each, so that was like six. That was too low. Okay, so six is too low. Uh, let's pop it up to like two shillings then. Too high. Uh, I bet I could go down to one. Bingo! He takes it. Perfect. There you go. Uh, where you want us to be, Chikevna? Oh, you can go ahead and meet me over by this boat over there whenever you have any words. Uh, we do. And he and his kids all go trotting off. Uh, he was the tallest. They were a range in age from seven or eight up to maybe ten. Right. You can tell they haven't showered. They're pretty poor. <laughs> but they'll blend in at a festival. It'll be fine. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. At least I'm not telling them to go steal out of people's pockets. All right. Anything else? Um, um I think Typhaid is starting to get her fill of humans for a little while. Can I do an outdoor survival check to sort of find fare and a place to sleep for the night? Uh go outside the city. Um yeah, yeah sure. Make outdoor yeah, oh, peace cake. Dang. There we go. Yeah. So I find uh, everything I need to eat and a place to sleep. Yeah, a shilling gate tax. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But if you wait till tomorrow, this is free. <laughs> the west east gate is free. Because people uh, are coming in and out of the gate so much to go to the shopping fest, they waive the gate tax during shopping okay. fest. Okay. Whichever one is allowing me to come in and out for free. <laughs> None. You well, can swim the river Bogan. Uh, swim. I can't swim. So I guess I'll just pay the, the silver <laughs> shilling. <laughs> okay. Just and... need some peace and quiet away from the monkey. <laughs> okay. There we go. You are outside of town. And there you find a, with that roll, you find a quite a peaceful spot for the night. Probably and... a medley of edible food. Yes. And yeah, that was a really good roll. Uh, anything else? Oh, uh, that's probably it. Anyone else? Uh, one sec. Um, I'm going to actually look around, see if there's anyone with, uh, let's say, a fight or a grudge looking to be resolved. Make a, a little percent. bit of gossip. That's tough. We go ahead, make a yeah, make a gossip. You could try a gossip, ask it around. Nah. 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 Now you can make a perception. There might be something obvious. Right in front of you. It's not uh, been the best luck for me today. Not more than what you've already noticed, which the Teamsters and the Stevedores hate each other. And yeah, I'll, I'll leave it for now. If a bar fright breaks out, I might might see if I I might see if I feel like doing something, but that's the extent of it. All right. Morning comes. You guys sleep on the boat. You guys all paid your money for the food you wanted to eat, except for Alberic and um, Durkas, uh, Durak, because they both got paid. Uh, their food got paid for. And you wake up in the morning, and way in the distance, you can already hear the fair starting to begin. The crowds are starting to walk down. Hoffenstrass and Nolner Weg to the East Gate to get down to the Schaffenfest. What Let's do you guys want to do? I'll check it out. Yeah, why not? And I can get in for free. Okay. Everyone else, all of you guys, another shilling gate tax. <laughs> but they said it was for free today. Oh, it is for free today. You're absolutely right. My bet. Okay, uh, so I thought guys... they were trying to grift you. Oh, that was a different guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna write a book called How to Fleece Parties. <laughs> <laughs>